uh, any could time. we wait until <laughs> could we could discuss that problem after the witching hour, <laughs> please? Because we, we do have a little regular item on loose ends called SAT, the Society for the Authentication of Tall Tales. We have Victor Lewis Smith in the studio this week. I want to know, would you tell us, Victor, is it true that... It's a pack of lies, Ned. I've said before, the scoutmaster involved looked the the spitted image of my sister Shirley on account of having a strawberry pip lodged between the roof of his mouth and his upper plate. (laughs) Shut up, it's disgusting. It's New Year's Eve in my luxury York penthouse flat. It's a little-known fact that the author Carlo Collotti's fictional creations, Pinocchio and his wife, live next door. The walls are thin and Mrs Trippi and I are disgusted by the sounds of their interminable sexual congress. I know what they're up to. My whippet has spied on them through a crack in the wall. Apparently, Mrs. Pinocchio sits on Mr. Pinocchio's face and he tells lies. Uh, Earlier in the day... uh, Mrs. Trivy, look, you're disgusting. Have you ever seen anything like this, though? I astounded Mrs. Trivy by taking off my wankle. It's small but perfectly formed and, frankly, the last bubble car to be found in Yorkshire. Uh, Not bad, eh? Not bad! Oh, look, there's one, Mrs. Tribbley, look. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it, Mrs. Tribbley, I'm going to hit it! We are playing our traditional New Year's game on the motorway, running over cute little puppies and scoring bonus points for style and panache. The head is clean off there. Let me explain in fatalistic terms. It's clean off. That was a five. The British love perpetually to remind themselves that they are a nation of animal lovers, which is why each Christmas morning millions of children awake to find themselves the owners of cute little lop puppies. Unfortunately, the parents of these children have even smaller brains than the puppies and fail to realise that by New Year's Eve, what was a four-pound bundle of fluff will have become a six-stone canine delinquent interior decorator with a penchant for the colour brown. Like any consumer durable, simply throw it away. All right, Mabel, open the door. Right, now, come on, boy, see that bone that looks like a coach doing 90 on the southbound carriageway. Fetch! It is not difficult to predict that before long this jettisoning of unwanted household items will be extended to grannies, unruly children and Liverpudlians who read trashy New Year poems on the wireless. Back in the flat, the the whippet has completed. The whippet has completed. Shut up turning my piece into a musical. Back in the flat, the whippet has completed his adaptation of Puss in Boots for staff and customers of South Ockenden Crematorium, and it's time for the press preview. (laughs) I stride onto the stage dressed in riding boots, fishnet stockings, low cleavage bra, tight black leather basque, and peroxide blonde wig. I didn't have time to change. Nervously, I slap my thigh and deliver my first line in a no-nonsense Stanislavski manner. 20 miles from London and still no sign of Dick. Hey, thank you. No, 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 no. Don't clap by yourself, Mr. Levin, or someone will throw you a fish. That aside, by your clock, it's 20 minutes to 1988 and pretty damn cold outside. Whereas I'm in York and the hot summer sun is shining in through the studio window. Let me explain in anachronistic terms. Broadcasters are notoriously lazy and indolent gits who despise the prospect of sledging into Broadcasting House on New Year's Eve. Let's face it, because the regular loose ends audience is all down the boozer or in Trafalgar Square, common sense tells me that the only people listening to me now are OAP crumblies who couldn't get up to switch off. This programme was recorded in July and none of us here know anything about, for example, a possible stock market crash or say the fate of a well-known jockey. Don't believe me? Let's eavesdrop in on the studio while my tape is running. Eavesdrop in on the studio while my tape is running. God! (laughs) Trying to be a clever bastard. Oh, God, turn that rubbish down. Please. Listen, um, have you thought of investing in BP shares? I think they're going to go very well. In short, anyone who's mentioned Christmas or New Year on this programme or said, brr, it's cold, is a lying bogus humbug. That's in short. In long, anyone who... These broadcasting doldrums extend right across the radio dial. For instance, even on Radio 2, what news there is was all written before Christmas. What a load of total crap. Good evening. Here's the thingy. Here's mm. the, um, the the news thing. Mm. Yes, and the major news story tonight: there has been a little uh, a little pussycat found on a greetings card. Oh. A Flinton man is quoted as saying, "Ah," uh, and there was some more news somewhere, but I can't God seem God to. Um, have, you, have you found that news yet? Oh. Meanwhile, on any station anywhere. What else is there? Oh, no! There's always the clutch of white Heather Hogmanay nonsense interspersed with a silly English bearded reporter standing outside the Dock and Firkin wearing a kilt asking brain dead revelers the perennial fatty questions about their New Year's resolution who gives a damn. And here's how to get shot of a kilted non entity with a microphone with only a few sentences. Right now! Oh. Right, what's your New Year's resolution then? Uh, well, uh, next year I'll buy my 10 packs in bulk from the cash and carry, I think. Uh, Mayweather, Mayweather, that's uh, an unusual one, yeah. isn't it? Well, let's move on now. Uh, and then. I'll bury the bodies properly and not just cover them with right. leaves. Yeah. I won't leave any more telltale right, yeah. blood. Stain. Wait, and, uh, uh, thank you. What? Back to the studio. Back to the studio. Aye. 
Then there are the pointless link-ups with relatives in Australia who only moved there in the first place because they couldn't stand the rest of the family and the last thing they want to do is start the new year with them and with problems with a delay on the satellite. <laughs> Tiny down okay, this is BBC Radio Cockabouth linking up with Radio Sydney. Off you go. Talk away. Hello, Hello. Speak can you now. hear me, Hello. London? Hello, um, yes. Speak now. Pardon? Mother? Hello. Pardon? How long Mummy? Hello. With the Sorry. Sorry. Pardon? Pa- who? Speak Mummy. now. Mummy? Hello. Pa- Sorry. <laughs> Up in Hibernia, Meet at the old apples and pears. Pa- we have streaks of Scottish bearded, tin pinstripe suits, and dressed as pearly kings. Milk skull, jelly deals, never playing the spoons, eating jelly deals, singing any old iron, and proving that the essence of comedy is. Why me? I thought she was brown bread. Inversion. And the stop press news net is that you've been decorated by the Queen not once but twice. You've become an Earl and been given an OBE. I think that makes you. And earlobe. <laughs> <laughs> There's been much more interesting stuff going on in the studio. It was a marvellous moment. Victor Lewis Smith is sitting with us, and it was a wonderful moment just now when he, well, several times actually, when he mimed two fingers through to the producer, <laughs> suggesting, I think, evocatively uh, scissors. The producer had obviously cut the more disgusting bits. <laughs> but then, rather vividly and uh, uh, equally evocatively, the producer mimed back with two fingers, <laughs> suggesting total rejection of Victor's point. <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm just amazed at what he can do with a haggis at this time. (laughs) (laughs) Richard, are you up to giving us...